Aloha, and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza. Uh, this is the first show after Thanksgiving. We had a little, or at least I, had a little hiatus last week. I had a great Thanksgiving uh, holiday. Um, back to work this week, and we're broadcasting the show today, which is a little bit of a sad day. Um, Jim Neighbors, who has been a, a very active community uh, resident here in Hawaii for many, many years, uh, involved in a lot of nonprofit organizations and events, uh, and was a, a friend of mine and my wife. We've had dinner with him. We've known uh, Mr. Neighbors, Jim, for a long time, um, and it's so sad to see him go. He passed away this morning. Uh, very delightful guy, big heart, um, somebody that we like spending time with. So, aloha, Jim. We miss you. I uh, also wanted to announce um, uh, next week, uh, December 7th, the Chamber of Commerce is going to be having a uh, focus on series for taxation. It's that time of the year. I'm sorry to, to announce that, but it's uh, the end of the year. we got to start thinking about taxes and, and doing some tax strategy. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is going to be having a conference on that uh, next Thursday from 8 to 10 uh, at the Chamber offices. So please uh, go to the Chamber website and sign up for that. We'd love to see you there. And then on December 13th, uh, the Small Business Regulatory Revo uh, Review Board for the state of Hawaii is going to be having their board meeting over the DBED building uh, on the third floor. Uh, please join us for that as well, and, and you can see how uh, new rules and regulations at the state and city county level are reviewed, analyzed, and then recommendations made to the governor. So I'd love to see you there for that. Now, talking about taxes, um, naturally, this is a good time of the year to have two CPAs on the show at the same time. <laughs> so I've uh, got Carl Williams here joining me today. Carl, welcome to the show. Thank you. And what could be more boring than having yeah, two CPAs? Well, we're going to try to change, that. change yeah. that. You know, one of the uh, acronyms for CPA is a constant party animal. So, you know, that's um, some of us live up to that and mm, yes. some of us don't. We try. <laughs> we try. So. Uh, but Carl, you, uh, you've been in a practice for a long time and you founded one of the larger <laughs> CPA firms here in town, right? I founded CW Associates CPAs. We are the eighth largest CPA firm in Hawaii uh, and through a lot of good fortune over the years. Uh, it's a great profession. I was uh, very fortunate to be hired by what is now Deloitte and Touche in the 70s, late 70s, and uh, have enjoyed the profession ever since. Yeah, Deloitte's a great firm. Just a little sidebar, uh, my second son is a uh, CPA with Deloitte & Touche in San Francisco, so he's doing very well over there, and he's, he's happy, although he complains about how expensive it is. Uh, I think that's a, a request for money occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you come from a, Deloitte was one of the big Big eight, I guess. Now it's big four. It's got a. It's one of the the blue chip firms. It was one of the big eight. Yeah. yeah. Now now the big four. Sure. Right. So that that's good. And so you you were in the Hollywood office, and then you decided to go out on your own, or how did that? Work? Um. After yes, after graduating from the University of Hawaii, uh, uh, and I had started my MBA. At that there was no Master's of Accountancy program. I started my MBA, but was having been a an alternative student, uh, did some travel, got drafted in the first lottery. I was a little older, I was anxious to go to work. I did continue the MBA and eventually uh, got that while I <clears throat> was working, but uh, I did start with Deloitte here in Honolulu. Um, Deloitte asked me to transfer to the Hilo office. They had offices in Hilo and Kahului in those days, uh, and I did that. And um, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I asked for and, and got the opportunity to manage that office as very early in my career, soon after moving there. And I learned the business of public accounting. Now, I love, I'm an auditor and business consultant. 
I just love the profession, love public accounting, but I learned the business of public accounting. And you know, we hire and fire. Uh, we have to develop the practice, marketing. We have websites and offices. It's and just like any other else. business. It's like any other business, <clears throat> and that's really got me excited. I did return here to the Honolulu office. I was with uh, that firm for 11 years, and. Um, was a partner candidate, but when it became clear that my future, if any, with the firm was going to be probably somewhere in the Midwest, uh, mm. they were looking at Arkansas. I have a, a, a fourth generation Japanese American wife and three Hapaoli boys. Uh, it just uh, wouldn't did, fit into Arkansas. No, and I really had no intention of ever leaving Hawaii any place. This was where I, yeah. I was meant to be. So. Yeah, That's my story. I'm, I'm glad it worked out. And then I guess it at did. some point, you did you go straight from Deloitte and right into your own practice, or was there something in between? Uh, we, uh, another fellow and I started a practice uh, of our own. Uh, we made it almost 20 years and then just decided we had different objectives. Um, so I restructured the firm. Uh, we now have five partners, a principal, a director. Wow. Uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and nearly 50 people, I think, were at 47, 48 as of today. So, um, very good, respectable we, size firm. You're doing, uh, it, you're doing well. It is, it is, yeah. We're having fun. And how uh, it's always a challenge. I, I had my firm for a while, and, and it was always a challenge for me to find good people to bring them on board and, and get them ramped up. Uh, are we still having those challenges? It's uh, hiring is very difficult, uh, regardless of what profession you're in. I don't, I don't think there's we have any clients who don't have hiring as an issue, or maybe even number the number one issue that they have to deal with. CPA firms are really no different. Uh, I think one thing that maybe is a little bit different, as you know, is that. Accounting, uh, certified public accounting, it's one of the most portable professions or skills uh, that you can have. You can really go anywhere in the world and, and work as an accountant. Uh, we, as have the other firms, uh, larger firms, probably firms of all sizes, really spend, have spent more and more time over the years. We participate in many student functions for most of the schools here that have accounting programs. We do office visits. We do um, office other, visits, meaning you bring the. They come to our office. As, it's part of what they have to do as as their club experience. There, we uh, two of our partners, Rodney Harano, our managing partner, and Terry Fujii, our audit partner, do a uh, an etiquette dinner at Oahu. Country Club, I think every semester, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for the students, you know, so they learn how, which, you know, which, which is bread, which is drink, and yeah. which fork to use, and all of that. So that has worked That's well great. for us. But a uh, lot of a lot of participation by our associates on at campus events as well. So we're always looking for good people and um, well and that, that's particularly in this market. I mean when we're running with a 2% unemployment rate, you know, you've got to be always looking for for good people. You do, and, for and sure. if somebody was interested in in talking to you, maybe somebody that's going to be graduating soon or um, you know, maybe graduating looking for an, another option, uh, how would they find out more about your firm? Uh, best thing to do is visit the website. Uh, I think any student who wants to talk to us has already done that. Maybe some Several times before they come into the office, uh, which is www.cwassociatescpas.com. And once there, there's an info, uh, or they can send an email to me or call and talk to any of our partners yeah. or uh, directors or principals. And, and you go out to the campus fairly often too, right? We do. Yeah, so we they do. could always yeah. find you out there at some point. There's always the old fashioned campus interview, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that still works, by the way. So. Good. Yeah, yeah, well, some things don't change. No, some things don't <laughs> change. So. Well, um, and as far as the type of person you're looking for, do they have to be an accounting major? Yes. Okay. But they, they can do that in more than one way. I mean, it's it's interesting, and I think this has been true throughout my career. You might have the same experience that a lot of us started out in a different 
area. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I wanted to be an engineering major, um, but we have engineers, teachers, uh, biology majors, um, uh, music majors who who decide, you know, that they want to get a job when they when they graduate. Something so that pays. they study account. <laughs> they start. They take some accounting classes and find out that they really love it. Yeah, interesting little side note. Um, one of my wife has a good friend, not one of my wife, my wife. <laughs> one of your wife? <laughs> my wife, one of her friends, <laughs> is a school teacher and was a school teacher for many, many years. She was also a, an accounting major um, and got a master's degree but went into teaching. And so she was teaching. Um, and then she found out just recently what my son started at, mm -hmm. um, right out of, fresh out of school, you know, with his master's in accountancy uh, with Deloitte which was more than she had been making as a teacher after 25 years. Wow. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, there's such a disparity. I mean, it, 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 accounting graduates, if they're t close to the top of their class, can get a really decent job and, and start out fairly well paid pretty quick. They can. More so in San Francisco area, I think, is where yeah. you're you Yeah, that's, that's another, you know. It's, it's, it's much more the cost of living, I believe, is yeah. considerably higher. But yes, it, we do we do start at a good Yeah, it, it's, 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 a, it's a good career to have. It's a great career. Now, I know we're going to go on a break shortly, uh, in about a minute or so. Um, but one of the things I wanted to get into, since we're talking about a, a good career and all this, is how the career has changed over the years. You and I have been in the career for a long time. Um, and I think we've seen a lot of evolution take place in, in how things are, are done. Um, not what necessarily, but how. You know, and it, it's, it's been a, an interesting journey that I've had going through this. Um, and I thought maybe we could share some more stories on that. Sure. Um, but is, before we go on the break, um, Tell me again, if somebody was out there and they were hearing about, uh, you know, your company and, and, you know, what makes your company different? What are some of the things that, that would attract somebody to go to your website and find out more about your firm? Well, we, we have, uh, and it's on the back of our business cards, it's our tagline, focusing on businesses and their owners. So we uh, have a, a very limited um, uh, tax preparation business relative to other firms. We tend to work with, I would say, higher net worth individuals or uh, individuals who own businesses. So we typically work with the business and with the owner uh, like that. And that's, okay. uh, I think we've focused on that and that helps us a lot. And I think the one of the most fun things about this profession is the business advisory part. And regardless mm -hmm, if you're mm -hmm. an auditor, such as myself, or a tax uh, person, there's this area in between of overlap, which is considerable, which is just general business consulting. And it's the most wonderful thing about this profession is you, you can really make a difference. People make the clients tell us you really make a difference well, I, in people's lives. And we can get more into that in the sure. second half of the show. But it, it's that complete picture and that complete understanding of what a business is and how it works rather than just having it compartmentalized. Correct. And that's yeah. what's so fascinating. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to go on a break. We'll be back in about one minute. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking with Carl Williams, uh, who has the eighth largest CPA firm uh, and is unique in, in some respects. And we'll talk about that more uh, when we come back. So we'll see you in about a minute. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink, but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver, and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line, keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O, and I'm the guy that says, let's go. Foundation for a better life. 
Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here this week talking with Carl Williams, who is the founder of one of the larger CPA firms in Honolulu, uh, and has had a, a, a very good and successful career uh, as a CPA. Um, I'm also a CPA, as, as most of you probably know. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit now in the second half of the show about how the CPA profession has evolved over the years. And it's, it's quite a bit different now than it was maybe 30 years ago when Carl and I first got started. Is 30 years about right? For me, it's a little closer to 40. But 40, all right. Well, yeah. obviously I'm a younger guy than you. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah it'll be 40 years for me in uh, January, well, actually. And, and I got mine, I think, back in 80-something, uh, so I don't know. Maybe that's 40 years, too. <laughs> yeah, so. So, um, but it's been a long time. It's been a long time. As a matter of fact, back in the mid-80s, isn't that when they really came out with the personal computers? Uh, that would be about right. Yeah. yeah, I remember Microsoft was out, and yeah. uh, until then, do you remember the original laptops, uh, compact? Sure, it and was a suitcase yeah, size. It was, it was yeah, huge. it was um, huge. And it, it probably and you had to sign a. If you took it to the neighbor islands with you, you had to sign a waiver to get on the airplane because the the airlines would not be responsible for any damages. You know, now that you mention that, you know, I was on the mainland and I did a lot of traveling with the old compact, and you had to take the screws and open it up and. It was a little green screen in there, and the keyboard was somewhat separate with a little cable to it. Um, and I checked that one time, and as we were standing there waiting for the bags to come out, we started seeing the keyboard keys coming out. <laughs> you know, and then the computer came out with the thing open, and it was all stretched out, and it, it was a, a real I didn't mess. experience that, but so it's yeah, <clears throat> it wasn't quite as compact or uh, you know transportable as you might think. But you know, we, we were we, we started when the technology was just beginning to evolve. Again, um, and it's been a, a while. But we used to use VisiCalc. We used to use Lotus. Um, do you remember VisiCalc? I do, actually. You know, I mean, it was a, the, the software was different. Uh, but even with some of that, we still had those little spreadsheet, the the, the seven column forms. Yep. You know, big paper. Did you have a dress code? Probably, I don't recall what it was. Yeah, I, I remember having a dress code. Um, you know, and the dress code was for both in the office as well as out of the office. Oh. There was certain uh, you know, clothing. I worked for Anderson. When I first started okay. my career, I worked for Arthur Anderson. Deloitte was the younger group. You Deloitte know? was younger, but you know, I was fortunate enough to, to begin my career right after they stopped wearing ties. Really? Yeah, yeah, and hats in the in Hilo. There are pictures of the older fellows before, just a few years before us. They wore short sleeve white shirts, ties, and hats. That was yep. the that, that was, was the, the code. code. Yeah. yeah, and the briefcases, no backpacks. It was all briefcases. Sure. You know, so but those were the the fun times. But the the basic business has evolved a little bit too, right? I mean, before it was pretty clean as far as audit or tax. Some firms might offer consulting, but it wasn't really that big in those days, uh, is it? it? No, it was very, <clears throat> uh, it was, I think very much so. It was audit and tax. There really wasn't much overlap. We didn't have some of these other forms of reporting either, than mm -hmm. like reviews or compilations. That came in the late 70s. It really didn't gain much acceptance until maybe a decade after that, uh, before they were more widely used. Well, it was predominantly larger companies that were the clients. Now it seems that a lot of the uh, the larger CPA firms can actually have a, a small and mid-sized business component to their practice. And that's what makes things a whole lot more interesting, at least from my perspective. Sure. Is it, you know, and, and the, the business needs of a small, mid-sized business is going to be a little bit different than, say, the Bank of Hawaii or First Hawaiian Bank or, or some of the other big companies. Well, I, th I think uh, I've always thought, you know, to be successful as a local practitioner is, first of all, to have a niche or niche, um, and, uh, and then to offer a lot of hands-on experience. And I think there are a lot of... Uh, uh, men and women in this town, like myself, who were with big firms, who like 
enjoy working, like the hands-on part of enjoy working directly with their clients. Uh, and so our leverage, uh, if you will, our ratio of a, our associates or staff, as you may call them, to partners is about half, maybe a little less than half mm -hmm. of a big firm. Now, when I was at uh, the large firm and was doing very large audits, I would be supervising up to maybe a dozen mm -hmm. or more auditors. You know, now there we have two or three on each engagement, so it's quite different. And with some of the technology, that two or three can do almost as much work as the six or seven used to be able to do. Is that a fair statement? Uh, for sure. I think, uh, sometimes I think, probably because, because of the amount of money we spend on computers, that, you know, each engagement it's like there's another person sitting in the yeah. room, yeah. Uh, almost uh, like that. But it's having both of us having come up through the paper and pencil stage. It's just the most wonderful thing to be able to do all of that uh, processing. It is, and it, you're allowed to develop more completely as a professional too. Because I, I enjoy being able to get into a client and be able to handle some of the the, the accounting issues, some of the tax issues. And then also advisory and, and how they can maybe increase productivity or efficiency or do things a little bit differently to increase the the environment, the security around some of the data. And, sure. You know, I mean, it's it's having a complete picture. And I guess part of this, if, if we were to extrapolate that out, is that that's one of the reasons why CFOs and companies are becoming the more common background for the CEO position. Yeah. You know, it's because sure. they do have that complete understanding of the entire company. Well, I think you had either mentioned it or alluded to it a little bit earlier about seeing so many different types of businesses and business situations and that, I think that's one of the things I really love about this profession, particularly as an auditor. Every day is an adventure, but you learn something almost every day, and then you take that to the next engagement, and you just simply discuss with people what you have seen over the past year, or in my case, many more years, and they take that home and process it. So we just had a conversation this morning. They process it, apply it to their business, and and credit us with part of their success. And well, what could be better than that? Well, no, it, it, it doesn't. Um, and I think part of the evolution of the, of the, the profession uh, also is the evolution of the person. I mean, every time you go through that, you become a better and better professional. You know, and your breadth of knowledge of, of all the different things that are going on and all the possibilities. I mean, it yeah, makes a, sure. a CPA pretty invaluable. You know, and, and to bring them on board and to bring all of that knowledge can really benefit a company. And that was part of, of the theme today for the show is, is why CPAs are critical for success. is because they have all these different, in some cases, best practices that are available out there. Right. Uh, and they can bring that and, and see which one fits best to the circumstances in that company. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's very rewarding to go through that process. Now, another thing that uh, we were kind of joking about this a little bit on break, um, another thing that makes it so interesting for people to come to work for CW and Associates is that is, it's true that you actually have workspace for everybody that goes to work for you. Uh, we do. We, we, we are not the typical CPA firm <clears throat> in that regard. Uh, many firms have gone to, I think they call it hoteling, where mm -hmm. you get on the computer and find out where you'll be sitting that particular day. We've actually, although we have reduced our footprint for everybody, including our partners, because we're now paperless, pretty much paperless, mm -hmm. but because we're paperless, there aren't stacks of papers everywhere, so we've reduced the footprint um, considerably, but everybody from the newest person to the oldest person, which is me, uh, has a place to work, but you can put the picture of the dog or your significant other on the wall, you got your snacks in the drawer, yeah. and you know, and some right. books and all of those things, and your own computer monitor and desk, so you personalize it. We think that makes a big difference, and you know, we, one of the things we say is, you know, we're downtown, we all work hard, sometimes they're longer hours. We spend more time together than we do with each other and than we do with our families. Yeah. So we better want to come to work every day, otherwise right. it'll be just another job. It's, it's important for it to be a comfortable environment. Because Absolutely. Some, some firms, and I've seen this particularly in, in law firms, you know, um, and maybe to some degree in CPA firms, but you know, a lot of people, they work from home. 
and they only come into the office when they absolutely have to or there may be a certain period of time that they need to be there so they can do their meetings and whatever. Um, but they don't have their own workspace and, and like you said, there, there's maybe a, a, a bank of places they can work and they all have these little things on carts with wheels that they can wheel the stuff out to and plug into whatever work area they have. Um, and it, it's hard to customize, it's hard to feel connected. You know, when you're in that kind of environment, we've we've considered that, but we decided to stick with what we do, uh, and that that's got to make it a whole lot more comfortable for the people that are coming. We hope so. We try. Yeah. Very good. Um, and now, for those that are looking for that website, what's the name of your website again? Uh, again, it's the the firm's name: www.cwassociatescpas with an s dot com. Very good. And then they can find out more about the firm, and and you know, I guess if there's any positions open? Is that going to be on there too? Or is it there just are just positions for... open. We're looking, our candidates are, um, uh, they have accounting. I, I'm going to sort of say often they'll, they'll get into accounting from another profession. My wife was a good example. Started out as an economics major, got a degree in that, came home back to Hawaii and got her MBA and studied accounting and that's how she got into accounting. So you need to have accounting, you need to have a, a desire to become a CPA, pass the CPA exam. Uh, they start with us. Uh, the newer people need a couple years of experience and to pass the exam along with the education to become licensed. Uh, but our expectation is that they will do that uh, within a couple years after they work. And once you become a CPA, uh, it's a life-changing event. It's hard, hard work. The exam now is much, when you and I took it, it was a paper-based exam. It was about two and a half days. Now it's a computer-based exam. It is so difficult and these young people have to be so so smart uh, to get it done, but it's um, it's it's really worth it. It's it just it's really worth it. It is. It's a credential that is going to have value, whatever you do going forward, because it's not only a, a credential of your accounting and auditing or tax skills. It's a credential of your ability to learn and yeah. to be able to comprehend and apply that knowledge. And it's it's much more than just number crunching. It's it's the actual application. And that's what that CPA stands for, is to be able to use that in your entire career. You're right. How did you know? Oh, you are a CPA. No. That's how you know that. <laughs> well, very good. Carl, we're, we're wrapping up right now. Um, any final words you want to just share before we, we sign off? I guess, uh, I guess it's a great career. and. and you, you no regrets. Uh, absolutely no regrets. I, I feel so fortunate that I discovered um, accounting uh, after doing other things for a while and was you know looking for a way to go back to school and what to study and I discovered accounting and it has just really been it's been a blessing in our lives and we uh, I mean couldn't ask for anything more. I would encourage you know anybody who's young and thinking about it to give it a try and if you like it you may love it yeah stick so. with it and if you don't there's all kinds of options that, that are there's, available to there you. There certainly are. Yeah. All right, <coughs> very good. Well, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we are broadcasting live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we just had Carl Williams on the show talking a little bit about how important it is to have a CPA on your team helping you in your business. Uh, you guys have a, a great weekend, and we'll see you next uh, Thursday. Aloha.